Anybody have a comment, question? Besides Nina. Go no. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, go ahead. I'll kick off. Well, I'd like to talk about some of the work, actually. And um, I suspect you recognize that a lot of people would look at these images and feel disgusted by them. What, well, I mean, that's not, you know, not, not to, to denigrate them at all. I, I suspect that's actually part of what you're thinking involved. It may not be. Well, if, if, if it is, I mean, it'd be surprising if they didn't. Um, what role do you think that disgust is meant to play in the experience? Uh, I, was, I wasn't actually, I don't, I don't think of them as having this sort of abject sort of element. For me, I find them quite seductive because of the way I've printed them. There's this sort of... Um, velvety sort of tactile surface to them, I, I relate them to a Baroque aesthetic of light. And for me, what I was interested in is that Baroque has this, uh, it's the first time you think of artificial light and this idea of lost and found information for so the, the, the direction of the light could pick things up. And so I wanted to, I mean, you've got the perfect body for a Baroque, like, you know, the filigree, the, the uselessness uh, of the... No, of the <laughs> 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 no, 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 So, for me, but also I've worked in labs. I mean, though I don't work with blood, because obviously with a cadaver there isn't blood, you know, it's congealed, it's dried, but that wasn't my particular aim and so I can't speak for how somebody else might find them. I know sometimes there's this sort of idea but for me I find it quite beautiful but it's, but also like you know there's lots of blood and things like this in uh, Baroque imagery it's not that it's you know but the, the video the video ca uh, the cameraman <laughs> who was videotaping uh, the surgery uh, did faint yeah. uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know uh, but we were assured that they had caught the camera before he hit the ground, <laughs> so the documentation w was saved. And at first, you know, they see me walk in and they're like, are you sure she's going to be okay? I said, no, no, she plays with the dead, it's okay. It's but that, <laughs> that revulsion was also a big part of how people responded to anatomy and dissection in uh, the Renaissance and in medieval times, and that was why part of why it was controversial. I don't think it was a revulsion, I think it was uh, because then it was a very spiritual body, I mean, it was actually done as part of a punishment sometimes, that you weren't, your spirit was going to be affected by what was going to be you know, denigration of your body. It hasn't always been, you know, it, it comes and goes throughout the history of the anatomical dissection. I don't think it was a revulsion. It was absolutely this horror of not, you know, being able to, to go to heaven, I guess. So, yeah. Does anybody uh, agree or disagree with what we would say? Yeah, a, a, a little observation and raise a question. Um, the observation is that um, I think Oran's right about discipline, um, and about, uh, uh, but we need to be really clear about what those disciplines are. Like science is about knowledge, not about truth, but about knowledge. Science? So, yeah. Really? I would say it's about knowledge rather than, than truth. It's you know, most scientists in my You don't believe in protons and electrons. Uh, I think that nervousness that has allowed intelligent design to get a foothold in about saying it's true rather than a theory is, is actually part of the genuine process of science. It's about what are the conditions of knowledge as well as yeah. the, and yeah. the contestation of it. And that knowledge can have uh, a use value and as opposed to a truth value. This is a critical uh, and, and often, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the use value of that knowledge is, is, is historically, because, you know, it's always, it always has a historical positioning. So you can't sort of Extract, you know, but that's you defining science as, as something that's useful for controlling nature. That's not. Well, I think I think what's really important is what Oren was pointing to as well, which is that it's not actually only nowadays that the scientific um, the industry and the institutional work of science isn't only about use value; it's about exchange value, and that's what's really a exchange critical what? change. Exchange for money. It's always been. It's a, not always. Really? No, no, I don't think so. No. What, what science? Are you was talking, what science is he talking about? Galileo was making very little. Oh, he made a lot of money as a philosopher. He made, he made uh, actually made more money as a philosopher than as a exactly. scientist. That was the philosopher. old days. Yes. But yeah. he did. Yeah. Uh, when, no, that's not true. He made a lot of money when he discovered the moons of Jupiter. Yeah. He named them after the Medici family. Oh yes. Of okay. Yeah. And yeah. He, yeah. when he uh, reinvented the telescope. He sold it to the Doge of Venice so he can mm -hmm. see the Turkish ships before they hit the harbor. Yeah. 
But the, crucial, the, the crucial thing, I think, is that there's there's one set of one value, or you know, there's no doubt more um, oversimplifying, of course. But there, architecture is about shelter. Uh, when you have a school of um, uh, fashion, it's about clothing. When it's a, when you have a med school, it's about health, etc. There are various values that each of these do. What I think art is doing that is, and this is my observation, really, is, is it is. This kind of art is creating a terrain on which we can discuss value, and that I think well, is it's you value. Mean money or no, I mean between or because or otherwise we only have our politics is so dominated by wealth creation as the only value that we no longer discuss the other kinds of values, including beauty, or discuss for that matter. Um, we don't talk about these things. We don't discuss the the relative merits of justice and. Um, wealth and knowledge and beauty. We, and that's why art is important, because it is a place where that can oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, right. so so This would yeah. be my little oh, yeah. yeah. but I, I would, I would yeah. add, though, that art doesn't sit comfortably in the realm of of, of, of sort of evaluation as such, or, or no. value, you know. No. Uh, it creates a terrain for that discussion. discussion. Yes, but unless art can generate the unexpected, can generate ambivalence and uncertainty, uh, that destabilizes our comfortable paradigms of what a body is, how a body operates, and, you know, is, it, you know, I mean, for example, I think one of the interesting things that, that all of these works touch upon is um, how either uh, bio-art or, say, robotics in some way, other work, uh, how, how physics, um, how can these different disciplines uh, uh, generate a, a, an aliveness, you know, uh, whether it's a virtual, uh, you know, what, what, what do you mean by an aliveness? Uh, an aliveness, in other words, what, what constitutes uh, what we call life, you know, whether, whether we, we, uh, we create it, you know, computationally as an artificial intelligence, or whether we uh, grow partially living or semi-living entities in, in labs. The physics doesn't um, discuss that. I'm sorry? I don't think, well, how does physics discuss? Uh, well, uh, aliveness in, in, in a more general sense, with, with, you, know, uh, uh, you know, from the micro to the macro. Um, I'm not sure what elementary particle physics figures in here, but the, I, I just saw a, uh, um, something that appeared in my email, a general, but probably some of you got it too. There's uh, going to be a uh, a series of lectures at UCL. Uh, what essentially is a, what do we need art for when we have neuroscience? And you know what is the role of art when with the uh, vis a vis developments in uh, uh, neuroscience? And that that will be kicking off uh, with um, uh, uh, Blakemore. We'll be talking about uh, yes. This is then a broader observation as well around the kind of political context of those articulations, especially of that uh, of the relationship between art and science. And I can perfectly understand why the three artists here have been so resistant towards the idea of the uh, science-inspired art and those hierarchies, because we can't forget about the broader political context. And for example, now in the UK, where funding is being withdrawn from the arts and humanities and the disciplines that are becoming a finishing school for very wealthy. And in the way that, I think what arts are doing in that particular context, they're asking very difficult questions about value, about the relationships between like, capital, power, hierarchy, structure, knowledge, and the kind of light lightness that Stella was talking about. And in my own work, I've been working with the concept of lightness, which is a re-articulation of Bergson's creative evolution, but also as a kind of political take on ways of trying to see things differently uh, beyond the kind of current political setup, imagining different presences and different futures. So imagining the way Stella was talking about on the level of the body, different bodily architectures, but also imagining different ways of possibilities for creating knowledge That's and en envisaging yeah, different ways. But yeah. in that sense, that kind of turn to science, which still becomes the ultimate validator of, of authority, of power, something the artists turn to, I think it's quite uh, pernicious. You, you're jumping at conclusions there. It's but, uh, there was a, there's somebody I'm jumping into conclusions. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the broader... Well, you're talking about in particular art theoretical framework, which is anti-science. Council's at the moment. Yeah. 
yeah. And but, the way the arts yeah. councils are withdrawing right. funding, the way the universities are losing funding, yeah. for example. Yeah, that, that, that's so a tragedy. There was a very interesting article written by one of the New York Times um, uh, writers on art, named Cottrell, who said that uh, uh, there are a number of artists in the United States who say, who say, yes, we're losing funding. So what the hell? Now we can do whatever we want. And that's that's so do whatever you want. That, that, that's another. It doesn't you know, matter. If, if you're doing, say, arthritis research. Oh, well, so no, we know no, no, there's plenty of money. We're talking about art. Right. Right. That's, that's right. right. There's a big. Yes, yeah, sir. There was a big problem there. Uh, yeah. The issue uh, is often goes under the rubric of uh, what do we? Why should we fund in, in art science? Okay. Uh, why should art? Why should scientific organizations fund art? Mm -hmm. There are not problems along, along, along the line. But I think there's always like, which science yeah. gets from. But I think there's always hierarchies and constraints and conditions that, that artists have to negotiate, whether they're artists based, you know, in a, at, you know, at a university or whether they're uh, working on, on, on their own. And, and I think, well, for example, Symbiotica has, has managed to do this. They've managed to negotiate. Uh, and and generate artistic projects. Maybe Warren could comment on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just want to maybe uh, uh, point uh, by the obvious that this is a commercial gallery. The work here is for sale. This is valued in monetary terms. Uh, yesterday when we had this uh, session, so, um, we, uh, before I got into the engineer about commodifying life, I had to uh, qualify it by the fact that saying I'm really uncomfortable because actually I'm got work that was developed by growing uh, peak tissue which is on sale at the moment in a commercial gallery for the first time in 10 years that I actually contemplated the idea of actually selling my work. So, you, you know, we, we, we need just, just a way of kind of uh, qualifying ourselves with we're part of the game. And for me, I must admit, it's, it's a way to raise funds for my next project. Uh, but it is to do, and the way I think we negotiated, one thing which was really important for us at Symbiotica, for example, was never to take money from scientific research. For both uh, maintaining our independence, but also so you know we, we're not going to be s subversive or kind of. But you're uh, part of the university. Right? We're part of the university, which funding. is general university. We get funding, funding from university, university yeah, and right, we get funding right. from arts funding right, bodies. Yeah. The research is being funded in Symbiotica mm -hmm. is 95 percent funded by arts funding bodies, mm -hmm. which is you know one of the issues when <laughs> trying to sell work now. That's right. But, you know that's running out. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, I had a question, or maybe it was more of a comment, but um, I mean, if you ask any good scientists, you know, what they're doing, they, they won't say that they're trying to prove something, they'll say that they're trying to disprove. And it's kind of all about the, you know, disproving the unknown and actually kind of challenging um, what's then, thought to be the norm. And they that's very Popperian. I don't know. I've never heard of that, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, uh, th that is a difference mm. uh, within the scientific community and, 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 and you know, artistic practice. You know, mm. whereas you know, whereas. Um, well, I think it's a similarity, actually. I think you know both. Are trying to challenge. No, no, artists, artists, uh, you know, aren't in the business of proving or disproving well, no, no, or no, no, disproving. No. You know, artists are more in the in the in the business of the production of objects and images uh, and uh, new kinds of you know aesthetic processes that uh, question, undermine, generate. Contestable futures. Yeah, that's, that's a difference between yeah. art and science. Well, well, so I, I think, I think no, there is, okay. there is okay. a. a, a yeah. uh, uh, Maybe uh, read the No, no, I'm happy no. to. <laughs> okay. I'd love to know the names of the scientists who want to disprove because that's, I've never, I, I've very rarely heard of No, no, that. because the scientific community, no, I agree with you that that's. That's that's what they what happens because uh, if you come up, you mean they try and disprove. Well, if someone says, you know, I, I've uh, oh, yeah. I've just uh, developed, uh, you know, cold fusion or whatever, you try you know, to some, test it. Someone's going to test it. You someone say, yeah, has right. to validate it. But they don't say they want to disprove. They want to test it. They want to test the prediction. Well, well, uh, you know, it might be a process of disproving, but uh, artists right. are never yeah, in that business. Oh no, of, yeah, absolutely not. You know, yeah. trying to right. art art makes no predictions. We that, that's we know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, good art, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just a, a, a little bit further down, this is, this is the question. The, from the art side, um, after 
Duchamp in particular, there's a very powerful argument that art becomes post-retinal, that it's no longer actually visual, it, it becomes increasingly conceptual, um, for good or ill. Um, to what extent are you making visual art? For me, I don't think it's... Well, if I come up with a fantastic concept, it's, for me, not so useful unless it can be like, visually actualized. I let it go if I can't actually bring it to a visual outcome. So it's, it's really important. And I don't like to think... And of course, I mean, I speak... I don't have a hierarchy in my practice. Sometimes because... I do very traditional work at times, and of course I call the anatomical illustration and all my earlier training. I don't see that I've progressed now, like bio art or working you know, with, in physics labs or, or even conceptually. Like I also like writing a lot and, and sort of uh, theoretical work. But I don't th see that I've progressed or, you know, it, it's, there is no hierarchy in that. But um, I, I'd like to think it can be visual and conceptual. It's not a problem. Or, you know, but I think you've I touched have... upon a, a dilemma, for example, say, say, with, say with nano art, right? Um, you know, how do you, how do you in fact exhibit such, such work? If, if it is, in fact, in the art, art context, it's going to be highly mediated. Mm. You're either going to be projecting an image from, a, from you know, uh, a scanning electron microscope or some other, you know, means of, of, of visualising such things. Um, so there is a dilemma, and, and, and it is a dilemma also with, with bioart, because if you're it's growing a layer... No, no, no. <laughs> no, if you're growing, say, a layer of living skin on a, on a scaffold, um, what you see is, is the kind of residual surface, in a sense, you know, unless you stick a microphone on it, you're not, not going to sort of experience the, the di dynamics of the cells, you know, growing over that scaffold. So uh, one of the problems with, with any art form is being able to, to kind of uh, do the appropriate mediation so that it can be uh, you know, experience, uh, and it doesn't always have to be optically, yeah. it might actually just be a conceptual statement sometimes, but um, the mechanics of, of mediation um, in terms of producing the artwork become very critical in, in areas like say, also, bio art and nano art. I'm also missing a point here, isn't this the, the, the old problem that we, we don't see anything directly, I don't see you directly either, it has to go through various Parts of my body and, and that's all the rest of that. Fortunate and, uh, thing. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. vice versa. But, you know, even if, even if we have to intercede with a microscope or a telescope, uh, we do that to extend our vision. So it's it, our, our seeing. So is that is that a real problem that you're talking about? Well, it's it. Well, it, it depends on how you frame the body as 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 an agent in the world. Wait, why? I mean, you're talking about nano. What we can't see, you know, ten to the minus nine. So we have to mediate that. That's right, but as, as an artwork in the context of a gallery or in the context of arts practice, yep. it, it is a dilemma as to how uh, how one appropriately mediates that process of, of bio art and nano art. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, all right, do you run into that? Constantly, and, and yeah. actually, in, you know, that's kind of an interesting case where when we were able for the very first time to show artificial engineered sculptures without mediation, in the sense of the direct engagement, mm -hmm. and that was with the Warrior Dolls back in 2000, that's when we stopped producing images. Absolutely. Because we were not interested in that. That's, that was kind of an intermediate stage where we were saying... Well, 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 about the, the size of these dolls. The, the they're about this size. And yeah. actually, you see the object, the, the pig wings are a great example. That's a, mm -hmm. That was a follow-up project in yeah. 2001, yeah. Um, where we were actually trying to figure out how people can directly engage and, you know, in a sense, have this visceral experience of engaging with something which is unmediated, having the closest thing to the uh, sense, the visceral experiences, I suppose, that I feel when I go to the lab and I work with this living material um, on, a, on a very experiential um, idea. But I, I agree with Sean, it's, it's kind of how you mediate this notion of, of a conceptual art, but you still want to uh, evoke a response. And you want to evoke a response which is unmediated, as, as Stelak was referring, you know, and that's one of our greatest challenges. And as you go down in scale or up in scale, uh, it's something that is obviously almost impossible to, 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 do, to achieve without reverting to what we refer to as traditional mediation techniques, yeah. which create this distance because we're so exposed to 
uh, modified, uh, manipulated images that we don't believe what we see anymore. And if, 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 we, if we want to, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say that that was one of the problems that I had. I mean, in a way, this work here, it's part of my PhD, that this was the beginning work. The work that's in the far room was finished yesterday, about 10 minutes into the opening. So it's a prototype for a, for a bigger installation. but. I found that, though I was talking about light, because it's mediated into an image, the subject matter takes over, and, and so in the end, all the works have progressed into being installations, and that's why I've got, you know, if you go into the light room, that there's the glass, everything, every component of the actual image making is happening in real time, and then I can sort of get rid of all the other mediation that's actually happening. So that was one of the problems yeah. that I had, to have this experience of light where it's actually yeah. the topic. And I think art, um, the oh, issue, uh, 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 but, but let's go on to yeah, but it's very appropriate. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and sure. jo Joanna's, Joanna's a friend. She's a friend, so she'll fully understand. Okay, uh, make, make, make it short. <laughs> make it appropriate. Um, I think the, the issue of affect in art I is important. It's not about information. It's not, you know, art is not an infomercial or an illustration of a concept. It, it's, it's a mode of the production of affect that uh, you know gives potency to an artwork. So, for example, um, uh, 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 until uh, uh, we can bioprint or stem cell grow a lump of living tissue that's slimy, that that has sighing orifices, that has wispy hair and bits of teeth, until we can actually produce these teratoma-like lumps of living tissue that, uh, that as an audience we can handle. We can, th this would be a potent interrogation of, of what life is and, and what it means to be human mm -hmm. might, might, might become. So the issue of affect, I think, which is not always a concern of science, and I don't want to make distinctions between the two, becomes, uh, I think, very relevant in, in artworks. Well, it, it's similar to, um, just to make a quick intercession to uh, astrophysics, if you, if you Google black hole, you see, you'll see something that, you know, uh, is a result of, a, uh, of, of a, what's called a scientific visualization. It's something that's generated by artists from, from, from mathematical models. You don't see that up there. Uh, sorry, you had a question, yeah. Oh, oh sorry. Wait, wait. Well, you, you've already spoken. Let me. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Oh. Well, wait, I'm trying to distribute this around. That's all. Okay. So I have a slightly different question. I work with the um, media, as you probably know quite a lot, and um, I have. You're all artists. You're producing art. You have a series of values that you ascribe to it, and we're all discussing those, but the one constituent who is it, the hardest people to get to any of these discussions or to these spaces are the arts critics. It, the science correspondents respond, philosophers respond, engineers respond, scientists <laughs> respond, um, and some very curious people who have already put the flag up and said, I'm interested in interdisciplinary discussion, come. Art critics don't recognise it, don't want to come, uh, don't want to be involved. It's very interesting. Actually, on, it? Ah, because they're, they're a product of this accident of the art of the last hundred years. That, you know, because we're not navel gazing, we're, we're actually talking about issues which are way broader than just kind of the, 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 the minutiae of the art world. Mm. They don't want to disrupt to put the carpet under their own feet. Yeah. And, and it's some, so somehow it's very interesting that, that sometimes uh, uh, critics or even theorists um, uh, uh, feel kind of um, anxious about artists who can articulate their position, and, and, and also um, uh, no, it's it's you know. So in other words, the the role of the critic is to basically uh, explain to the to the audience what the artist really means, and and an artist who might be able to articulate their work is kind of seen in a, in a you know is seen as an awkward kind of. Uh, in the awkward, mm -hmm. um, I, I yeah. can see that sort of culturally, but there's something much more important going on, which is what art is and what it does, and the surrealists and the diarists and many other sort of early mm -hmm. modernists were sort of equally challenging their culture. That's what we're trying yes. to get out here. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So trying to get and out here. And you are squarely in that yeah. tradition right. as yes. artists, mm -hmm. and yes. I don't understand why that tradition isn't, isn't being engaged. There's something either visceral oh. or 
incredibly difficult for this very well trained and highly intellectual group who do understand what art is and what its role yeah. has been and what it should be now. Yeah. I, I'm sure they totally understand that and they see that you're doing that in that tradition and yet they still don't come. Did, did you pose this question to them? I, every day. And what's your response? What? No, I haven't. No I've been trying to, it's something I want to try and engage yeah. with here actually and try and get them in and, and start to, to do to it. To back this up, which my experience is that for 20 years, in my experience, and that's relatively brief, we couldn't get moving image art covered by art critics. They, you know, people, you know, the, the big art papers wouldn't cover a Bill Viola show because of his moving image, or they wouldn't cover yeah. Michael Snow or um, Peter Goodall or anyone else because, and it wasn't curated or kept by the Arts Council, it wasn't curated or kept by the British Film Institute, it fell between two stores. As a result, it was the one avant-garde that the yeah. British have ever produced, as it happens, yeah. was the film co-op and, and London Video Arts. But, um, so there may be positive virtues to, yeah. to but, ignore. But, but culture has an amazing capacity that within 20 to 50 years, it will have absorbed you know, the kind of the radical, edgy and, and new media work of the past and, 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 and it will, you know, I mean, we just have to look at historic, you know, uh, the history of art to, to see that. I mean, question. maybe we have a dystopian vision because now we go to a big Biennale and there's a number of, basically have, well, what would we have, 60 to 70% screen-based works um, in Venice or somewhere like that, yes. and maybe we, we see a future where there are labs in each space, I don't know. Mm. I mean, do we want that? Do we want that sort of proliferation? Probably not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Iran, do you want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I do my stuff. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so far, sorry. And any uh, moving discussion along now? Yeah. Um, I, I want to come back to this transgressive aspect of bio art. You're being all incredibly laconic about it. Um, as though, I, I feel as though you know, what you're doing is it's just another form of art that people could look at. You, you must all be aware that actually, you know, the technologies that you're working with are themselves seen sometimes as transgressive. And what you're doing is, in some ways, whether you're intending to or not, is, is forcing that issue. It's saying, you know, look at what these technologies are, are making us confront and, you know, we're presenting it in a manner that, that really raises those questions. Um, so, really, I just wanted to ask whether you feel that that is one of your aims and also, you know, what, what sort of responses do you get to, uh, to, to that, that, that element, that transgressive element, that idea that you're doing something unnatural with the body or with life, with tissues? Um. I don't know as artists whether we, we sort of are deliberately provocative or transgressive, although, you know, I guess if you have an ear constructed on your arm, uh, that, that might be seen as, as, as somewhat sort of uh, strange. But I, I think really it, it is, uh, um, all, of, all of these projects are really about this, this idea of alternate, uh, you know, examining and exploring the, the possibilities of alternate sort of evolutionary architectures. And, and also um, being fascinated, you know, Nina's fascinated with comparative anatomies, and, and, um, but this idea of sort of hybridizing insect, animal, and, 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 and human sort of structures, uh, you know, produce kind of new hybridities of possibilities uh, th that would be very interesting. Uh, sort I mean, like, we all perceive sort of like science that... Science inspired art, you yeah. Oran, do you want to jump into this? Yeah, I would like to, because, uh, and I think that might also kind of touch on what Anna was, uh, was asking. Uh, you remember, at the beginning I said that I'm trying to deal with stuff that we don't have a cultural language to engage with. Mm -hmm. uh, and trying to develop this new cultural language, by definition, can be seen as a transgression, trans transgressive act. The fact that those things are happening on a routine basis within other realms of our society and our culture, within the scientific lab, within the engineering workshop, uh, but by them being introduced within this cultural realm without the language to engage with it, the critics can't deal with it because they have no language. Uh, the, the public sees it as a transgressive act because how dare we violate their, uh, you know, and challenge what the, they felt the world is. It's like it's not a warm, fuzzy uh, feeling to be 
stand speechless in front of something yeah. and needing and being forced to rearticulate for, for oneself uh, what one is being confronted with. Uh, and so, you know, so it goes for both the public and, and the critics that, yeah. you know, we, we, we're actually asking them to work. And every time, every time you challenge somebody's worldview, they're going to defend it quite strongly. I mean, I, even when I had my PhD confirmation, I finished and, you know, on, on the panel this person said, well, you know, they had actually really loved my work until they heard me speak about it, and then that had ruined the whole experience. And it, there was no actual question that she, this person ever posed to me. It was a diatribe, this attack of, like, how, I, you know, she was insulted, and that was the end, and she left. And it was kind of like, well, you know, it's sort of... But transgressions are occurring not only in the realm of art, I mean, with reproductive technologies, for example, you know, we're, we're getting unexpected uh, possibilities that generate, uh, you know, unease. So, so uh, women with blocked fallopian tubes could have children uh, with sort of external fertilisation of their eggs, right? But, but then people didn't reinsert the egg in, in the same body, you know? Uh, or uh, a mother could bring to bear the, 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 the egg of, from her daughter because her daughter might have been in danger of, of having uh, medical complications. Um, they recently brought to bear in the UK uh, 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 an embryo that had been frozen for over 30 years. And they reckon now uh, they can extend that to, f to 50 years, which might mean that your sibling is born basically after you after you die um, so you're a generation apart uh, so the, you know we, we flush we flush uh, things down uh, down the toilet uh, or we freeze them for, for future experimentation now these are sort of transgressions in a sense uh, in terms of the normal a relationship of, of, of reproductive techniques in terms of evolutionary time, uh, and uh, and this has happened because of you know of science in this case, not because of, of art. Um, so it's not only in the realm of art that that uh, these things can 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 occur. Right. Any other uh, questions, uh, comments? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to ask a question, which was you know really about the whole purpose of this series of debates, which is that you know, the science art movement is a new movement. Um, but I came to London in 2000, you know, and science art was seen as a relatively new movement then, 10 years ago. So what would you identify as being this new movement? When did it start? What time period are we talking about? Okay, ask him. <laughs> <laughs> what I said at the beginning concerning bio art is that uh, biology-inspired art <laughs> is that is that it, it's new in the sense of the uh, uh, techniques that are used very recently that are producing astounding, astounding results. Uh, well, physics what's recently for you? What, what makes new? Uh, maybe it's an age issue. What, what, what's new? Uh, how old? <laughs> the thing needs to be before it's, it's not new anymore. Well, it's new, uh, it's new in, in, in the sense of the past 10 years. I'm not saying new in the sense of yesterday. Okay, it, it's new in the sense of the past 10 years, which is reasonable to call, to call something new. Uh, you couldn't have done in the 1980s what you're what you're doing now. Uh, well, John Davis did uh, which genetic is pretty, transformation which is pretty in his artwork in the 1980s. Which is pretty astounding. Uh, yeah. A good man here, yeah, huh? I don't want to expose your age, but you, you've been doing work for a while. With the industry, I, I don't really... George Gensett. George Gensett and his work. Right? Actually, I, I first grew rat, rat muscle cells, uh, myoblasts, in my residency at CMU in 1996. Yeah. And... Uh, but putting a, a petri dish uh, on a pedestal uh, wasn't what I did at the time, and so it was a dilemma in terms of how one exhibited such well, I would say what you're work. doing with respect to technology is certainly fairly recent, in the past 10 years or so. Uh, I mean, it's with, really with taking, what, uh, sorry. Uh, I don't know, with your robot extensions and things of that sort. Oh, it goes back. Oh, mm. uh, no. <laughs> ah, well, okay, you're old stuff. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, bio-inspired art. I mean, there have been some recent results that have been fairly, within the last 10 years, that have been, that have been fairly astounding. Uh, I don't know, technology Physics, physics inspired art. I mean, the techniques didn't, didn't exist until... Uh, until fairly recently for observations of quasars and black holes and things of that. On the other hand, yeah. Lena established uh, ISAS and A long time Leonardo ago. Leonardo? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking about, yeah, but that's all fine and good. I'm, I'm, what, what's in Leonardo is quite, 
It's quite, it's quite something different. But, but, but that years. concept of, of art, science, technology. Oh, that's an old. That's an old concept. Years old. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, thirty-two thousand years old. That yeah, particular right. iteration. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, well, I, I can read these uh, opinions in nineteen thirty-six. Uh, you know, if you want to go, some of the scientists that worked in digital culture in the early twentieth uh, century, you know, they, they were referred to it as art. So mm -hmm. It wasn't accepted then, but Laura Marx traces it back to um, the Islamic history of digital art. Yeah, that's well, that's, a, that's another situation. Yeah. I think it's ha how much you want to generalize yeah. and the, the language in 30,000. Yeah, well, you can, you can change. Well, of course. I mean, uh, all knowledge existed a long time ago. Hmm. But the point is of, of the developments are fairly recent. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say in the 90s there was this explosion. Uh, I would agree with you there. That the yeah, yeah that, that's fine. Okay, uh, so that's, some... that's, that's still new, okay? okay. And even, even in the 20, 21st century, it's yeah. new, isn't it, mm -hmm. too? I'm not saying yesterday. I mean, history is in the last 10 years as well. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that, that I hope yeah, I've answered your, your question. Yeah, I, yeah. Make point about that. I, mean, I, do, I do kind of see where you're coming oh, from. Let, let, me, let me say something else. Um, the, the process is gradual, OK? I think what's bothering you is the word revolution, maybe. The process, that's silly. Yeah, the yeah. process is gradual. Yeah. But what's, what's happening is astounding in, in recent yeah. years. I just think that it, it is all down to language. If you say that, you know, uh, you know, art, biology-inspired art goes back 30 to 2,000 years. I don't quite agree with that because, you know, biology as a science hasn't existed for 32,000 years. Yes, but if you look at these cave paintings, there are paintings of, of animals on the move, etc. that are extremely interesting. But, you know, and these artists, these artists were not just drawing an animals. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, they, they were experimental. It was only coins in the yeah. 1800s. I'm not talking about that. that I'm, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking in a much larger yeah, sense. A if you look, no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're trivializing it. If, if you look at these yeah, cave paintings, if you look at these cave paintings, there's a difference between nature-inspired art and science-inspired art, or life-inspired art. Yeah. Well, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But these artists are, are truly amazing in, in prehistoric times, if you want to let me use that term. In that they weren't just drawing an animal; they were drawing an animal moving. It was very Kupka, Franz Kupka-like painting you can from say the that beginning that's of the just 20th century. Though. It's just illustration of observation. Is this um, a, is this not illustration? No, illustration actually. <laughs> most no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't illustration. say that. I, it, it, illustration's a bad word. I wouldn't say that. I, these, are, these are not illustrations. It's similarly yeah, on, on pages on cave. You haven't seen them. They're not illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess, I guess uh, some of the ease that, that maybe um, you know, the group of artists is, is sort of experiencing is, is rather not to argue the fact about sort of, you know, science-inspired art or the, even the relationship of science and art, but rather uh, what, for example, is interesting about you know, synthetic life, artificial life, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, you know, how do we generate aliveness in robots? What is it mean, how meaningful is it to say that, an, you know, an artificial system is intelligent? Um, you know, uh, those sorts of questions are, are, I think, the realm of operation of, of, of the artist rather than well, it's a, it's setting a very, up categories very of framing. Art, yeah. a very uh, particular you know. art, yeah. Mm. But, Jaina, you had a question. That's all right. <laughs> 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 no, that's no, fast. No, that's that's no, life, no, yeah. Fast. Um, anyone else wants to continue the debate, or we can just continue the debate over another glass of wine outside? <laughs> I would just like to argue against hybridization and for conversation between oh, disciplines. Nice. And I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to see a third discipline in the time now. I see. Okay. So He's that's not sure. Okay. From the point of view of the arts capitalists, okay. I think. Uh, but we, we, we encouraging uh, science and art collaborations. We see scientists as being there to be very interesting, uh, and us as being there very interesting to want to bring them together. Yeah. But we don't um, necessarily expect them to hybridize or yeah. to sort of mutate into this. Oh, no, 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 within which uh, artists can generate these alternate viewpoints, multiple and diverse um, viewpoints, and, and I think that's, that's kind of what's generated the, the discussion. Yes, but what we're trying to do is set up a, a, a generalization, and I'm not saying you're sure, okay, we're trying to uh, you know, speculate on what might be the case. And again, who knows 
what anything will look like 50 years from now. Okay, to, to say you're sure about something is not a good way of going about it. And my head, maybe that we kind of by, by doing so we we kind of discrediting the enablers and those are the you know for good or for bad the engineers and the technologists, and we need to acknowledge their role with the kind of facilitating both both kind of artistic sure. practices and scientific Absolutely. practices in the sense it's them who are doing the dirty job, but there's also the issues associated and that's something we explored this week the fact that they want to be now on the top of the hierarchy and that's something that I must admit I find extremely disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there are problems. Well, I don't know about the others. But what's what's in? So, so when we had talks by engineers in the synthetic biology uh, workshop that we just ran, they were trying to put themselves as the top of the hierarchy. Uh, they were the one who was saying that the revolutionary thing and using this revolutionary language about synthetic biology that is engineering driven, that it's about the application of real engineering logic into living systems. They're talking about biologists and especially molecular biologists as people who are throwing stones into a river and call it a bridge and they're coming in to build the, re the real bridges. And that's the type of thing which I think both enables us as artists to actually engage with those new palettes of possibilities that are being offered, but I think this very uh, mindset is something that we all have to be quite worried about, and I must admit that my quest as an artist at the moment is to try and counter this engineering mindset while using those very same tools that are being provided to me by them. And following up on that, you know, uh, you know, I think the artistic process is not about making a blueprint and then sort of realising, uh, you know, the work Rather, what's interesting is the, the slippage that occurs between the intention and the actualization of the work, factoring in the ac you know the accidental, uh, if, and, and ho hoping for the unexpected. I mean, for me, if, if the unexpected doesn't occur in in the artistic process of, of what this artist is doing, then it's probably not going to be interesting art. And if it doesn't have an ambivalence and if it doesn't have an ambivalence to be open to interpretation, then again it becomes a closed system that is uninteresting. Um, so it's not uh, so, but that's really, and that's art. Yeah. And so you're saying the engineers and the technology are, are coming into the art space and actually. Well, that, that's science. Art, art, yes. yeah. art doesn't yeah. interest them. Yeah. No, no, they're coming into they're coming into our lives through. Okay, let me start. <laughs> there, there is this what's being referred to now as the single engineering paradigm. This idea that the engineering mindset is invading matter using nanotechnology by trying to engineer matter atom by atom, engineering life through synthetic biology, molecule by molecule. Uh, we learned yesterday about kind of geoengineering, engineering our whole planet through engineering logic. And what's the most extreme of all, and that's going back to your comment, neuroengineering, which is trying to engineer our thoughts. So this idea of the engineering mindset seems to now take precedent, and we see it through the funding system, we see it through the debunking of anything which doesn't seem to be utilitarian, is something that I think we all need to resist, artists and scientists together. and, and put engineers back to where they belong and that's being our servants and they're very good at that. <laughs> I, would, I would say that uh, I'd be willing to be complicit, uh, complicit in this engineering sort of um, trajectory uh, as long as they were doing experiments on this artist so this artist could experience directly and thereby be able to articulate in a meaningful way what what what's actually happening? But not misproduce this artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> yeah. Okay. On, on that note, um, any other new new questions or comments? I was hoping. Okay. I think perhaps we should adjourn and continue the discussion over a glass of wine outside. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.